Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. It is cold and it is cloudy all across the metro Detroit area this noon. And meteorologist Brandon Rue is tracking the possibility for rain this weekend, which is better than snow. But first, the city of Detroit continuing its push in the community to educate and inform and get more people vaccinated for COVID-19. And that does top our news this noon. Thank you for joining us. I'm Rhonda Walker with the city's vaccination rates at only 21%. Many community organizations are stepping up to get the word out about the availability of vaccines, the safety of vaccines. Hank Winchester joins us now live from one of the vaccination sites on Detroit's west side. I mean, they are making it more convenient than ever for people to walk in and get vaccinated. Is it helping? It is in certain areas. In fact, this is one of the community and health centers that you mentioned, high profile one, because it's tied to Reverend Horace Sheffield. And as a result, he's been able to access his database to get as many people here as possible. Take a look. I mean, there's been a steady crowd here all morning long. We had not seen that, though, at other community centers and at the TCF center during the last few days. And as you mentioned, the city's doing everything it can to get more people vaccinated, uh, offering walk-ins, no appointment needed, uh, doing everything everything they can to make sure that Detroiters get shots in arms, but it has not been working. So why is it working here? Well, again, it is that connection to a well-known name. It is that database. It's getting information out into the community, which uh, the mayor says now that he's seen what's happening here, that he's going to expand and work with uh, Mr. Sheffield to offer more vaccines here and also work with other influential leaders in the city to get people vaccinated. We had a chance to hear from Mayor Doug in a short time ago. Take a listen. We're seeing it across the country. There's no question about it. We have to shift uh, in the early phases, people who are anxious to get the vaccine, the city of Detroit was the most efficient at getting them vaccinated. Now, for those who are not as motivated, we got to be more accessible. I think we've opened up some neighborhood walk-in sites without uh, a lot of publicity in the neighborhoods, uh, and so we're fixing that. So that's part of the plan moving forward, letting people know that those neighborhood walk-in sites are, in fact, available. But that's just a part of the piece of this puzzle of working to get more shots into arms. The mayor was very clear and very direct about what we may be seeing next, and this initiative is big. We're going to be taking a look at that part of the story tonight starting at 5 o'clock. For now, Rhonda, we're live here on the west side. Hank Winchester, back to you. All right, Hank, thank you. And certainly time is of the essence. If we're trying to battle this coronavirus, getting the vaccine is the way to stop the surge and keep more people protected. But if people aren't motivated, as the mayor said, then that is not helping at all. As the vaccination efforts reach a new milestone with 200 million shots administered, President Biden is now pushing more Americans to get their shots. And there's mounting concern over the number of unfilled appointments across the country. With more, here's Miguel Almaguer. Our nation shatters another vaccine milestone, 200 million shots administered. The president is now turning his focus to Americans who are hesitant or lack access and time to be vaccinated. I'm calling on every employer, large and small, in every state to give employees the time off they need with pay to get vaccinated. But the race to reach herd immunity could be derailed by those unwilling to be vaccinated. A new poll shows 20% of Americans are not at all likely to get a vaccine as soon as it's available. And today at many super sites and local pharmacies, hundreds of thousands of appointments are wide open across the country. I just look at it like this. I think just being vaccinated, I'd rather be safe than sorry. With a decision about whether to resume the Johnson & Johnson vaccine to be addressed by CDC advisors tomorrow, a new snapshot shows, despite the pause, vaccine confidence is rising. But there are new details about the Baltimore plant where millions of J&J &J doses were ruined last month. An FDA report obtained by NBC News found serious violations at this emergent facility with basic missteps over sanitation, training, and improper storage of ingredients. Johnson & Johnson says quality and safety are paramount, adding the company will increase its oversight. Are you ready? 
party. Meanwhile, focus is also shifting to inoculating the young. Teenagers who qualify now getting their shot at a vaccine. I'm just really glad I'm finally able to get it done and over with and, you know, just claim victory. As states across the country face the threat of a fourth surge, the critical push to vaccinate continues. And for some Americans, so does their defiance. That was Miguel Almaguer reporting. Now, as more states are dropping their mask mandate restrictions, there are growing questions from some over how long Americans will be asked to wear a mask, particularly outdoors. CDC Director Rochelle Walensky appeared on the Today Show this morning addressing that question. You know, this is a question that we're looking at. One of the things I think that's really important to understand is while there's wonderful news and we're getting more and more people vaccinated every single day, we still had 57,000 cases of COVID yesterday. We still had 733 deaths. And so while we are really trying to scale up vaccination, we have this complex message that we still have hotspots in this country and we will be looking at the outdoor uh, masking question, but it's also in the context of the fact that we still have people who are dying of COVID. And we are one of those hot spots here in Michigan. Turning our attention to the very latest coronavirus headlines over the last 24 hours, the state reported more than 5,500 cases here in Michigan and 45 more lives lost. We do expect to have updated case numbers as always this afternoon, so we'll pass those along to you. Meanwhile, making the vaccine more accessible in the city of Southfield, Beaumont is holding a walk-in clinic until 1 o'clock this afternoon. It's at the Southfield uh, Beaumont Service Center right there on the lodge off the lodge in Losser. You do not need an appointment and also more appointments are being added at Detroit's Ford Field vaccination site today through Monday to get an appointment. All you have to do is text the word end COVID to the number 75049 to register. And coming up later in this newscast, we are going to be talking to Carrie Ebersall Singh. She's the director of the Protect Michigan Commission. She is there over at the Max Vaccination site at Ford Field. She's going to have an update for us from there coming up shortly. We also want to get our update from Brandon with a look at our forecast. And I know Hank only had on a sport coat and I'm like, wait, it was in the 20s this morning, but we warmed up a little bit. A little bit. The clouds, though, have scaled us back a little bit, a tiny step backward. We were 43 degrees at 11 a.m. and now 42. Usually our numbers go up, right? Well, we get rid of these clouds and those numbers will start to take off, but that could take a couple, two, three hours. 41 in Howell and Port Huron. 42 Detroit and Monroe. You can see those west northwest winds, nine to about 17 miles an hour. So, yeah, those wind chills are still low and middle 30s as you're heading out. There is in these clouds limited moisture, but still a little wintry mix possible uh, through about 2, 230. And then we're going to start to see the clouds. Uh, erode a bit and low 50s even with that breeze but you can see a little of that moisture trying to work in Rondo a lot of that is not hitting the ground but there is a little clearing back across the western part of the state so we'll warm into the 50s today how about 60s 70s near 80 in the seven day ahead oh bring it on I'm <laughs> looking forward to that indeed we'll see you here in a few Brandon Meanwhile, here new at noon, we are learning more about the crash that led to charges against a state representative, Jewel Jones. According to the police report obtained by Local 4, the Inkster lawmaker tried to use his status as a congressman and threatened to call Governor Whitmer and that it would be bad for the responding officers. Jones was arraigned last week in connection to a crash along I-96 near Fowlerville. He faces several charges, including resisting and obstructing police, reckless driving, and drunk driving. Tonight at 5, we'll have more from that police report. Also new at noon, ex-Michigan Health Director Robert Gordon is set to testify before a House committee after it issues a subpoena. The committee wants Robert Gordon to testify about exactly why he left. 
about exactly why he left his position back in January and signed a separation agreement worth more than $155,000. Last month, Governor Whitmer and Gordon agreed to waive the confidentiality portion of the separation agreement. However, neither side has revealed exactly what led to Gordon's departure. So to come protests overnight in Columbus, Ohio, over that deadly police shooting of a 16-year-old girl. Next at noon, we'll have the very latest on the investigation.